This is Ken Jobst with Inspirational Moments. Not long ago, I had to get my driver's license renewed. So I go into the Bureau of Motor Vehicles and stand in line. And while I'm standing in line, I looked around at the walls and there on the wall is a framed photograph of the governor. And I was wondering why would the governor want his photo in the driver's license bureau? Well, I got to thinking about it. Why is the mayor's photo in every police station? Why is the president's photo in every federal office? Why does the queen's portrait appear on every piece of British money? And for that matter, why are there American presidents on American money? Well, this brings me back to a very famous passage from the Gospels in which Jesus asks a crucial question. From Mark chapter 12, verses 14 through 17. When they had come, they asked Jesus, Teacher, we know that you are true and that you care about no one, for you do not regard the person of men, but teach the way of God in truth. Is it lawful to pay taxes to Caesar or not? Shall we pay or shall we not pay? But Jesus, knowing their hypocrisy, said to them, Why do you test me? Bring me a denarius that I might see it. So they brought it. And he said to them, whose image and inscription is this? They said to him, Caesar's. And Jesus answered and said to them, render unto Caesar the things that are Caesar's and to God the things that are God's. Well, Genesis, the very first book of the Bible, tells us that we were made in the image of God. Watch from Genesis chapter 1, the very first chapter of the Bible, verses 26 and 27. Then God said, let us make man in our image, according to our likeness. Let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, over the cattle, over the earth, and every creeping thing that creeps on the earth. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him. Male and female, he created them. Now, it's an interesting thing about this being created in the image of God. Being made in God's image is part of God's representational rule over creation. This is the principle that holds this. It says that the rule of the sovereign extends to wherever the sovereign's image is found, be it a photo in an office or a portrait on a piece of money. You see, in the ancient Near East, images or statues of idols were placed in the idol's temple in order to remind those in attendance that the idol's rule that place. Now, the second commandment tells us not to make images because they infringe on God's rightful sovereignty over our lives. Now, here's the interesting implication. Every earthly ruler's reign ends somewhere. My American money with American president images on it it won't spend in Canada. It won't spend in, in Brazil, right? The president's authority stops at the Canadian border. Premier Xi Jinping's authority stops at the Russian border. He's the premier of China. He has no say in what goes on in Russia. However, wherever you see a human being who is made in the image of God, you're looking at the realm of God's sovereignty. Whenever you see another person, no matter how grand or how humble, 
be reminded that God is still on the throne of heaven. That's what representational rule means. It means when the image is there, know that the sovereign is there. When you see another person made in the image of God, know that God's rule extends to that place. So, bearing the image of God is a defining characteristic of what it means to be human. It's an honor, a responsibility, and a reminder of God's boundless love for each and every one of us. With this inspirational moment, this is Ken Jobst from St. Stephen Church. Have a great day. Thank <laughs> you.